Hi everyone, welcome to episode 15 of Behind the Brush. I'm Joy Baker with All About Art Gallery in Hendersonville, Tennessee. And today I'm joined by one of our favorite local artists. I'd like to welcome Kathy Dunn. Hi Kathy. Hi, thank you. Yeah, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. It's an honor to be here <laughs> among all this talent. <laughs> Well, we have represented Kathy's work for about three years now. Um, she is a watercolorist, um, among many other talents. Um, she's lived here in the Nashville area for about five years now, but you're originally from uh, Pennsylvania, and then you spent most of your adulthood in Ohio, right? Correct. Nice. Um, so tell me a little bit about your background. Like, what led you to become an artist? Have you always been an artist, or is it something recent? I never was an artist. I actually was a math teacher, so I always... When I looked at paintings, like people that maybe art teachers at schools where I taught or artists that I had um, just run into in the neighborhood or something that said, I paint, I would look at them and I'd think, oh my gosh, how did they do that? I was just <laughs> always in awe. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I can really remember as a child is sometimes I would be sitting at home and I would sketch something mm -hmm. with a pencil. Like I'd see a chair across the room or I would look at um, just a window, and I would just sketch it. And I was little, you know, mm -hmm. probably 8, 9, 10 when I did that. It wasn't anything that stuck, but I do remember doing that, mm -hmm. but I never had any art lessons in school. My parents thought chorus and choir was more important. When I'd have <laughs> a free period, they'd say, well, sign up for chorus. And I'd think, I kind of wanted to do art, but okay. Sure. <laughs> so, so there was no art. So I actually spent 30 years teaching math, wow. raising my family. And then when I retired after a couple of years, I found um, a community center that offered classes. Mm -hmm. And I signed up um, and I didn't know anything. I didn't even know the difference between acrylic oil and watercolor, <laughs> but it was the only class offered. So wow. I signed up. Mm -hmm. And um, I loved the people there. They were wonderful. But there was no instruction. She was a lovely lady, and she painted. She sat at her desk, and she painted. Mm -hmm. And the other people in the class painted. They all brought their stuff. I came the first day with my purse and nothing <laughs> else. She goes, oh, did I not send you uh, a list of things to bring? And I said, no. So she gave me a little palette of watercolors and a piece of paper and then she'd set up a still life and everybody just got to work and at the end of like an hour and a half she walked back to me and I had sketched like the blocks with pencil and I kept correcting it because the perspective looked wrong mm -hmm. but I'd never touched the paints I didn't know you know oh no just sketch and start painting she goes we even started painting I said well I, the blocks aren't quite right <laughs> So needless to say, I had a wonderful time there. I met some great people, mm -hmm. and I bought all the things she told me to buy. <laughs> but after about six months, I realized I didn't have a clue what I was doing. So that was that. And then I, um, I still would look at things that people painted, but I... Um, I just, I really didn't know what to do with it. I thought it was like coloring book. You know, you try to wet your paints and, and, and fill in, and, and that's not how watercolor works. So, so and then I moved here and after I retired. Here. And, you know, I had been in Ohio a long time, and I didn't know anybody. Mm -hmm. I moved here. I had two daughters that lived on the west side, but um, I was in a community where they had many, many options and I signed up for watercolor classes, signed up for book club, I signed up for radio control sailboats, I signed up for <laughs> anything <laughs> to try to meet people. <laughs> so one of the classes I took was watercolor taught by a resident mm -hmm. and he was wonderful. Started from the basics, you know, mm -hmm. what is a wash, what is this, what is that, and I still had all my materials. He said, wow, you've got everything you need. I said, yeah, except I don't know how to use any of it. <laughs> so that was that. That was the beginning. And he was very, very motivating. He was very inspiring. He, every week, had challenges for us and different things that he would teach us. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing he told me was just paint every day. And I did. Nice. So that's how it all began. 
So do you continue to learn through self-instruction or do you continue to take classes? Like how do you continue to grow as an artist? I still take his class from time to time. He's okay. got a whole new group. It used to be all people that intimidated me because they knew how to paint mm -hmm. and I didn't. Um, but those people have all moved on and he loves the beginners. That's his favorite thing. Mm -hmm. And he's got a whole new group now. So every now and then, you know, a friend of, and I will go and we sit in the back and, you know, it's just nice to be there. And he always says things, you know, there's new things that you pick up all the time. Mm -hmm. And then I also joined a group in Old Hickory and they have all kinds, of, not just watercolor. There's artists there that do oil. There's artists there that work with acrylic. There's a watercolor teacher there to help people on Wednesdays. And I have um, learned things from them as well. Every watercolor artist has something to teach you because everybody does things differently. I so can that's been really, really challenging. And then the other thing is I have a critique group in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I'm the only watercolor artist, but <laughs> <laughs> we critique each other's paintings. Once a month, we get together and bring whatever we're working on. And they've been wonderful mm -hmm. with, you know, being able to talk about watercolor, talking about what they do with acrylics or oils. And, and I've learned from them. But they're very, it's, it's a very uh, positive critique group. You know, it's not just, I love this, but it's like, okay, why did you choose that? This really looks like it works. This doesn't look like it works, but mm -hmm. it's been very, very helpful. It's so nice when there's a community of people that you can go to um, for constructive feedback um, mm -hmm. because you can stare at a painting all day long and then your eyes start to cross and uh, you're like, exactly. I guess it's okay, you know? Yeah, <laughs> so it's I nice to get that feedback. I had done one painting and it was pretty much done and the one woman said, well, there's like a star and I can't get my eye away from it. And I can't even remember what the painting was, but it wasn't a star. It was part of background, like trees or something. And she could just see a star shape and that's all she could see. And I said, oh, I can fix that. And then I couldn't stop seeing the star. It was there. <laughs> so that kind of thing is helpful because you don't see it. Hmm. But, and I still watch tutorials. Like yeah. I said, every watercolor artist does things differently, so there's so much you can get from watching tutorials. I can definitely see how every watercolor artist would be very different. It's such a hard medium. Um, few people realize, and I guess that's probably why there's so few watercolorists, really, is that it's, it's hard. It's hard to do. Um, which is so interesting that. to me that you, <laughs> as, as a novice artist, <laughs> <laughs> picked the toughest one. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. So. Yeah, well, you're definitely excelling at it. You're doing great. Well, thank um, you. So do you continue to kind of sketch what you're doing before you start painting, or do you just go in with paints? And no, no, I totally sketch. Okay. Totally sketch before I start painting. I'm just, um, I don't feel like I have enough imagination or picture in my head to just take a blank sheet of paper and create something. Mm -hmm. So there's always reference material. There's mm -hmm. always a sketch of where things are going to go mm -hmm. before I start. Gotcha. Would you say you do like a, a fully rendered sketch before you start painting on it, like with shadows and a little? No, light? I don't do the shadows, but I do a little less than I used to. Okay. I used to do a lot more detail in the sketch before I started, but mm -hmm. now I don't need as much. I can, I can sketch where I want things to be and then go in with the paint. And, and I'm a little more confident with that now than I used to be. <laughs> gotcha. Well, one thing that I love about your work that not a lot of watercolorists do or maybe even know about is um, you actually have a technique with your pieces where you can mount them and then varnish them so that they don't have to have glass. And I think that's so interesting because that's sometimes a reason why um, people may be turned off of a watercolor piece is because, oh, well, I have to put, you know, glass and a mat on it. But with the way that you have mounted some of these, you don't have to do that. Is that something that you came up with yourself or did you find no, that? No, I was another, you know, just looking at things on the internet, I found a link to um, a watercolor artist that said, I found a way to not use glass. And it was very intriguing. So I read through his whole process. It was very detailed, even down to the brands that he uses for everything. So helpful. And I thought, well, he was doing large pictures. So I started with four by fours, <laughs> very tiny, <laughs> and worked my way up. The biggest one I've done is probably 11 by 14, because you have to weighed it down mm -hmm. and fortunately for me I have a lot of math books having <laughs> been a math teacher and they're very heavy mm -hmm. so I do have those to stack and weigh things down but I haven't gone bigger than 11 by 14 yet. So. Is it a pretty long process? It's not 
all that long, but it has a lot of steps. I mean, to do the step is quick, but then you have to wait. So the wait like the time. Krylon, that you're spraying it with to seal the watercolor so that when you varnish it doesn't smear. There's like a good 15 minutes to half an hour between coats, and I do three or four coats. Then the varnish, which is mixed with medium mm -hmm. and a little bit of water, that's a two-hour wait in between coats, and I do four coats. So, so is that a brush-on varnish that you do? It is, yes. It's, a, it's by Liquitex. Okay. It's a, it's, I use both their medium and their gloss varnish, and he does a mix, and he has a, a formula he uses of proportions of one to, you know, the water, the, the varnish, and the medium mm -hmm. that he puts together for the top coat. And then um, the final coat, you know, um, I let it set overnight. And what I learned after the first couple times is to not take the tape off. Mm -hmm. Like, keep the whole thing taped down on the board where I painted it, mm -hmm. do the spraying, and do the varnish right on the board. Otherwise, it'll curl. And it'll, Interesting. And, you know, so if you keep it right on that board the whole time, you know, and I put parchment paper down, and then I just pile the books and things on top of that, then I don't have a problem with the curling. Nice. So, yeah. And the products you use are archival quality too, so that's a nice element for people yes. who are purchasing the art is that it's, mm -hmm. you know, even though it's ex exposed per se, it's still a quality product that's going to last. And the problem with watercolor glass, besides the weighting down and having to be behind glass, is the reflection problem. Mm -hmm. So when you're putting a watercolor painting in a certain room, on a certain wall, if there's a window reflection or whatever, you're always going to get that glare unless you use like really high quality conservation quality glass. Yeah. That cuts down somewhat, but it also darkens the picture a tiny bit. So. Yeah, I've noticed that as well. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, we have a lot of your artwork here, um, but I'm pretty sure that you have favorites that aren't here. Um, what would you say I would be do. your favorite piece that you've painted or pieces? I have um, the first painting that I was really, really attached to sold the next day because I posted <laughs> it on next door and Aww. a neighbor bought it. And I was like, wow, that's great. And then it was gone. And I thought, no, that's not so great. I really liked that painting. <laughs> and that was social distancing. And you oh. have also sold prints here of yeah. that painting. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't own it anymore. But I do have a print of it that's framed in, in my bedroom. <laughs> so there's that. So nice. that was one that I really, really liked. And then another one um, that I had painted that was in your gallery for a while, but it actually sold off of my website, is Rainy Day Blues. And it's just, I that's don't know, a there's one. a mood about both of those paintings that really appeals to me, mm -hmm. that I can almost place myself there. and it can put me in a contemplative mood looking at it. So mm -hmm. those two especially I like. And one I still own mm -hmm. <laughs> is Lightness of Being. And you also have a scan of that mm -hmm. um, that Adam did for me. So right those are probably my three favorites. Although, you know, if I look back through everything, I think, oh, I like that one too. <laughs> Do you think that you're attached to these paintings because of the like emotional significance of them or because you feel like it's maybe like your best pieces? I I would say maybe a little bit of both. Rainy Day Blues had a lot of intricate detail um, in some of the background mm -hmm. and it was challenging. So um, th that was one thing about that painting I liked, but I really liked the feeling of calmness for me. They aren't people I know, but there's people in them, mm -hmm. and there's something that I relate to that they're doing, whether it's, you know, sitting reading a book, having a glass of wine, mm -hmm. or in Rainy Day Blues, she's just sitting on a railing looking out, you know, into nature, and just she's contemplating or thinking or whatever. It's just a peaceful, something I would do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that's more of it. Nice. So kind of an element of peace. I think that could be said for most of your paintings, actually, because um, no matter which one you look at, whether it's, you know, cheerful flowers or kind of like a peaceful landscape, there's there's an element of peace, I would say, in every painting that you've done. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, that's kind of a consistent and even a consistent color palette, whether that's intentional or accidental, um, even though they're all vastly different. You know, these are all very different from each other, but they have kind of a consistent value 
um, well, I do to the color. Well, I do of the same paints over and over, so it, <laughs> it, could, be, it could be something that you're onto there. So you have some favorite paints as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nice. What are you currently working on? Um, I have received a lot of pet commissions mm -hmm. um, in the last couple of years. So right now I'm working on um, a cat. Mm -hmm. And the cat has kind of an interesting backstory. Um, a friend of mine from Ohio who had commissioned a couple other paintings of mine contacted me a couple weeks ago and she has friends in Cleveland that spend their winters in Florida. Mm -hmm. And while they were in Florida last year, they found the stray cat and they adopted the cat. And the mm -hmm. cat had many, many medical issues. Aww. So the cat, they had taken to the vet and was on medication, but they fell in love with the personality of this cat, who they named Lucky. Um, <laughs> and Lucky went back to Ohio with them, but Lucky only lived for four more months. Aww. So they didn't have Lucky very long, but they just adored the cat, and they had just a great connection and good mm -hmm. memories with Lucky, and were happy to give Lucky four good months, you know, Aww. with, you know, taking care of her issues that she had and everything. and. So this friend in Ohio sent me pictures and said, would you please paint Lucky? Because I want to give it to my friends for a gift. So that's what I'm working on right now. That's so sweet. It must be so rewarding as an artist to be able to help people kind of immortalize the love that they have for someone. Because I would assume yes. that maybe not all pet portraits, but a lot of pet portraits usually happen, you know, posthumously. Um, Yes, the last probably three or four have been that, and I just feel a little added pressure because when you know that this is not the pet that's walking through the living room, but it's a portrait that's on the wall, you really want to get it right. Yeah. You've done a couple pet portraits for us. You did mm -hmm. um, a dog for one of our customers. I think you randomly saw the picture on Facebook. Early, <laughs> Early yeah. That one turned yep. out great. Um, and then you recently did one of a couple cats for another client. Oh, well, that's right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Those both turned out great. Yep. Nice. Well, Kathy, I feel like we've learned a lot today. Um, I really appreciate you coming and talking with me about your process and your paintings, and um, you're just a delightful person, and so I do really appreciate you coming to do this well, with us. Well, it's an honor. You know, I still feel like I am just surrounded by talent every time I walk in your gallery or <laughs> any other gallery, and I'm thinking, what am I doing here? <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, oh. Well, the but honor I is do, ours. I do feel now more like an artist than I did initially. Every time somebody would say, that's really good, I'd think, really, are they just being nice? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think they are. <laughs> well, I think you. you are that good. <laughs> Thanks so much. Well, thanks again for coming. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, we are all about art gallery and custom framing. We're located in Hendersonville, Tennessee, in the City Square Shopping Center at 260 West Main Street. Um, you can reach us by phone at 615-826-9880, and you can come in in person um, to see Kathy and more great artists that we represent, or you can find our website, allaboutartgallery.com. Um, thanks again, Kathy. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.